Land of the Giants is a classic TV show from the late 1960s that takes you on an exciting adventure. In the show, the crew of the spaceship Spindrift crash lands on a mysterious planet where everything is much bigger than what we're used to. The crew members are tiny like bugs compared to the giant people living there. Watching this show is a lot of fun and full of surprises. You might find yourself laughing at the funny parts, surprised by the twists in the story, and even touched by the emotional scenes. Do you have any special memories related to this show? Maybe you remember the first time you saw these big adventures. Think about that time. Was it when you were watching TV with your family, hanging out with friends, or when you first discovered your interest in science fiction? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments. Whether it's a funny story, a surprising moment, or a heartfelt memory, your experiences with this well-known show are what keep its story alive. Let's share our memories about the times when Land of the Giants took us to an extraordinary world. Land of the Giants, a TV show from the late 1960s, stands out because its main characters are shrunk to about an inch tall. This unusual idea makes it different from other shows of that time and keeps it interesting. Each episode shows the tiny characters facing challenges and trying to escape from normal-sized people, which keeps the show exciting. The show had a good budget, which was important for making the small characters world believable. Even though the cast wasn't very famous, the writers did a great job creating stories that kept viewers interested. The show is fun for people of all ages, making it great for family watching. The show can also be seen as a symbol of the Cold War era. The giants in the show are like the Soviet Union at the time big and scary, but also seen as clumsy and not very advanced. The tiny American characters, even with their different and sometimes imperfect backgrounds, show cleverness, creativity, and teamwork. These qualities are like the values of American democracy. But the show isn't perfect. There are some parts of the story that don't always make sense, like how fast the small people can move or how they hide. The special effects were good for their time, but might not look as good today, and the novelty of the big props wears off after a while. The actors do a good job, especially Kurt Kastner as Fitzhugh and Don Matheson as the character who leads the group. Gary Conaway also stands out as Captain Burton. However, the female characters aren't given much to do and could have been used better. In short, Land of the Giants mixes fantasy with a hint of the real-world issues of its time. Its special idea, combined with good acting and creative stories, makes it a memorable show. It mixes adventure and excitement with deeper meanings and would be great to see reimagined with today's technology and ideas. Before its production, the show underwent notable changes from its original concept. Initially, Irwin Allen presented a six-minute film to network executives showcasing a storyboard of the pilot. In this early version, significant differences were evident. The character eventually known as Steve Burton was originally named Tim. More strikingly, the character of Valerie did not exist in this early iteration. Instead, a female doctor named Joan Templeton, who was on her way to a science conference in London, was part of the story. Another interesting fact about the show is its use of props. The cabin chairs in the Spindrift, the spaceship central to the series, were the same as those in the cabin of the spaceship featured in Planet of the Apes. This recycling of props was a common practice at 20th Century Fox during that era, exemplifying the resourcefulness of production teams at the time. Heather Young, who portrayed the stewardess Betty Hamilton, faced a unique challenge during the series' second season due to her pregnancy. This situation necessitated creative adjustments in filming. To accommodate her condition, she was often filmed from the waist up, wore loose clothing, or was occasionally written out of certain episodes. This approach demonstrated the production team's adaptability and commitment to the continuity of the show despite real-life challenges. These behind-the-scenes facts offer a glimpse into the creative process and production challenges of the show, highlighting the efforts to bring this imaginative world to life. From the evolution of character concepts to practical prop usage and accommodating cast members' personal circumstances, these details contribute to the rich history of this beloved series. Comic book artist Alex Ross was influenced by actors Gary Conway and Deanna Lund for his drawings of Reed Richards and Sue Storm in Fantastic Four Full Circle. The way these characters look in the comic shows how much the actors influenced him. 
There's an interesting detail in the series that's set on an alien planet. The vehicles have Chrysler Corporation nameplates, which accidentally shows they're from Earth. This small mistake adds a special touch, mixing Earth-like features into the alien setting. In the second season, the crew starts using new tools like a laser torch and a periscope. These tools help them solve problems on the planet where being small is a big challenge. These additions made the story better and show what how clever the characters are in adapting to new situations. The show has continued to inspire and amaze people with its creative stories and unique visuals. It has a lasting influence in the world of science fiction TV. This show set a new standard in television production costs at its time of debut, reflecting its ambition and the high expectations from its creators. The investment in the show's production was evident in the quality of special effects and sets, which were crucial to bring the world of giants and tiny humans to life. This financial commitment underscored the show's unique position in the television landscape of the era. A notable aspect of the production was the dedication and physical involvement of the cast. Actors and actresses performed their own stunts, a practice not commonly seen in television productions of that era. This approach added authenticity to the action scenes and demonstrated the cast's commitment to their roles. Only in scenarios where the risk was deemed too high, stunt doubles were employed. This practice further highlights the physical demands of the show on its actors. The timing of the show's filming and its actual airing presence an interesting chronology. Initially planned for an earlier release, the delay in its premiere had a noticeable impact. This was particularly evident in the apparent aging of Stefan Arngram, who played Barry Lockridge. Since filming began earlier than the show aired, a span of three years occurred over its two-year run and 51 episodes. This timeline offers insight into the challenges of television production and scheduling, especially when dealing with younger actors whose appearance can change noticeably over time. These details about the show's production costs, the physical commitment of its actors, and the timing of its filming contribute to a deeper understanding of the challenges and triumphs in bringing this imaginative series to life. The dedication of both the production team and the cast played a significant role in the show's success and its lasting appeal to audiences. In the episode Wild Journey of the show, Steve and Dan go on a special time travel adventure. They try to change history by convincing someone not to take a doomed flight. This episode is different because it doesn't focus on the usual giant encounters. During production, there was a problem with Stefan Arngrim, who played Barry Lockridge. Arngrim had grown up a lot, so he couldn't look like his younger self. The team used another actor as a body double for him, showing how they could handle unexpected issues. The show also hinted at possible future storylines that were never explored. Deanna Lund, who acted as Valerie Scott, said in an interview that if the show had a third season, her character and Mark Wilson, played by Don Matheson, might have had a romance. Interestingly, this would have reflected the actor's real-life relationship since they got married after the show. This real-life connection adds a special touch to their acting together on the show. Saving money was important for the show's production. To cut costs and not need a lot of storage, the team used big props that they rented from the Universal Studios prop store. These props were first made for the movie The Incredible Shrinking Man 11 years before. Using these props again shows how clever and practical the production team was, making sure the show looked good while keeping within their budget. Learning about these specific episodes, stories that were never told, and how the show was made gives us a better understanding of the series. It shows the creative and practical problems they faced while making the show, and how real-life stories sometimes mixed with what we saw on TV.